Hey everyone, real quick, I just kind of want to remind you guys, this is not the proper bleed, this is just how to fix the bike. So like if you want a quick fix, let's say the shops you're working with aren't taking repairs because of the holidays, or you have this stuff before a ride and you're kind of far away from a shop, it's always good to have a bleed kit at home if you are an avid recyclist. So just throw it on there. Very easy to do. Um, and again, remember, bleeding brakes is not that hard. All you're doing is just removing all the air bubbles out of the, the system completely, the lever, the line, and also the caliper. So if you put a syringe on one point and this is closed, you can basically suck out the air from one point to another. Um, this is not the proper way to do it, but this is a quick fix that I've worked my way through uh, in, in desperate needs of customers bringing their bikes in on race day to get them going. So again, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Thank you so much. I'll see you all later. Hey, how's it going everyone? This is GC Performance here back with another video. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace this lever right here. Uh, it's doing the thing where when you squeeze the lever, the brake lever is not returning. It has brake actuation, but this is kind of a big deal with uh, the SRAM brakes. Sometimes where they say like the, I think they say the master cylinder gets stuck and it gets blocked in there so it doesn't return. So we have here a new lever, uh, our dot fluid and also our syringe. I'm gonna show you guys a quick way to do this. Obviously I'm gonna do a complete bleed on it, but I'm gonna show you guys a way if you're ever in a pinch and you have to put on a new brake lever and you just have fluid, you don't wanna do a complete bleed. I'll show you guys how to do this to a point where you guys can put it on there. It will fix it and just by putting fluid in there and not passing through the whole brake line. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and then we'll get back to it, I'll install it and we'll go from there. <laughs> hey guys, from the actual uh, bolt, now you have here the stealth majig, that's what SRAM calls it. I'm gonna cut off this one because they sent a new one with a brake. So what I'm gonna do is put this brake lever down right here. This is our new stealth majig. I'm gonna take this brake cut right here. Put it right here, hold on a second. Very difficult to do this one hang out, but <sighs> okay. Brake line is cut. Old stealth majig. Throw it away. We don't need that no more. We're going to install a new one. We're going to insert it onto here and then just basically screw it in until it's flush. So I'm gonna get that installed. And then I'll show you guys what to do next. Okay, so we have, oh, sorry. Okay, so we have the Stealth Majig installed, the new one. What you want is you want this red uh, olive right here to be flush with that top bolt right there. So when you install it, it's gonna get flush, it's gonna bottom out, and then that's all you really, you don't wanna to over tighten it, you just want it to bottom out and that's good. And then the idea is that when you screw this in to the actual brake caliper or lever, it's going to crush this olive creating a seal so that way no fluid gets out. So, we got a new lever here. My friend, can I get some assistance, please? Oh, my, that way you guys can see this. Just keep it right there. And basically all I do, I'm just going to screw this in like this. There's no fluid inside here, so I'm gonna have to bleed this no matter what. And make sure if you do have a, a dial like this, where it says pad contact in, make sure this is undone all the way away from the arrow when installing it during the bleed. So now this is as finger tight as I can get it. I'm going to give it a little turn real quick. And now I'm going to install it back on the bars where I had it at. Like that. And you want to make sure this is kind of snug, so that way you can crank down some torque on this 8mm right here. This is an 8mm. And all we're doing now is we're tightening this up to a point where we can crush that red olive. And if you don't know how tight to go, you just want it to a point where you have force, or you're getting force back on there. If you're unsure of what it is, you can always thread match it to the other side. That's better right there. I got like two or three threads sticking out there. So, then we would clean it with some uh, isopropylene alcohol. This will cover that back up, and then we have to get to bleeding it. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here, and I'll kind of get the syringe on there. Okay, so we have a new one installed. This is tight. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this down with some alcohol. And you can be, uh, you can be very liberal about it. Doesn't matter. It's just alcohol. It's not gonna get anywhere on there. Then we're going to remove this. It's a T15. It's wrong tool. It's a T10. I'm sorry. They provide you with a tool to do it. Move that right there. Take that out. 
again, there is no fluids here. So this is completely empty. There is fluid from the caliper to the brake line because this was from a different brake. And this is old fluid. I'm just gonna show you guys what to do if you're ever in a pinch. Let's say if you have to replace your own brake lever or something like that, you could take, so you open up this hose line right here. You push it down like this. So you push fluid in there and you see how it's pushing it back out. Now we're gonna suck the air out, kind of purge it. Then we're gonna push back down in. We're gonna suck back out. Kind of push it back in. And all we're trying to do is just get every single air bubble out of this line, out of the caliper, and out of the lever. Give it a couple squeezes, pumps here. As you guys can see, I'm getting actuation there. I'm gonna re-bleed this too, but I'm just showing you guys what, what to do in a pinch. So this is not what I recommend, but like I said, if this is your own bike, you got it at your house, you got a spring in your line or something like that, you got the parts to replace it, you can literally just, as long as you have fluid that's existing in there, it's okay to work with it. I'm gonna, look at, getting a platform there. It's returning great. Again, we're just gonna keep on doing this process for a couple times. Uh, I'll show you guys what to do after this, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here, and then we'll go from there. All right, cool. So right now we got this. Again, it's all the way up there. We're good to go. Uh, don't pull too much on this plunger because you can break the seal on there. You just kinda wanna go up and forth on it. But we're where we wanna be at. My last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down one last time, just so I get a little bit of pushback. I want to pressurize the system. It's pressurized. We're gonna go ahead and clip this off. Now again, guys, don't do this if you wanna actually do like a, a solid bleed because I'm basically pushing new fluid in with old fluid. It's not the end of the world because I'm sure you guys are riding with bikes that haven't had brakes bled in three or four years that have dirtier fluid than what I just put it with. Um, but this is just for you guys at home. If your brake is going all the way to the handlebar and the, let's say it's like a holiday and there's no bike shops open. Um, so this is just again for a quick fix maybe for you at home just to get so you guys can do a ride on there or whatever. Um, but I do recommend after doing this to go ahead and flush out all the fluid, put a syringe back here on the caliper and push fluid through do a proper bleed on there. I can do a proper bleed tutorial if you guys want. But uh, this is just, I've done this with Shimano. I've done this with SRAM. This is with SRAM. I've also done with Shimano with the cup. I was also done for road bikes. It works every way. So it's just, again, a quick little fix hack to get it done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unscrew this. You're gonna see some fluid come up. So I'm gonna do this real quick. I'll grab like a little towel like this. Something to catch the overflow of it. And let's see, it's gonna burp out. A good amount's gonna burp out like that. But that just means it's pressurized now. So, and then we're not gonna touch anything on there. You wanna squeeze or nothing. Go ahead and put that in there. And this stuff is very corrosive. So, after this is done again, you're gonna wanna hit it with an isopropyl alcohol. This is very, I'm a, I'm a righty, so this is very hard for me. <laughs> but righty tighty. Make sure that's good. It's tight. You can go ahead and torque it down if you want to be anal about it. Again, this is just for the video. It's good to go. Clean off the excess again. And now, you have a solid bleed on there. You can adjust the lever output if you want. You can adjust the pad contact, but that's about it. You really don't have to do anything else after that. This is again, just for a recommendation of if you have to replace a lever, if you have to, if one of your levers has died, and like I said, you're far away from the shop, you just want to get it right out. It's just a quick little tip on how to fix the lever temporarily. So he's good to go. I'm going to run a proper bleed through here now, but uh, yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions or you want me to do a full tutorial, let me know down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye.